Hi, another six Caillou challenge here. This one's called sum of digits slash digital root. The digital root is the recursive sum of all the digits in a number. Let me explain. Given n, take the sum of the digits of n. If that value has more than one digit, continue reducing in this way until a single digit number is produced. The input will be a non-negative integer. Check out the examples for 16, right? That will break down into one and six, right? Those are the individual digits. And you add those and you come to seven and you're done because you have a single digit. You're at the digital root, what they're calling. 942, you've got nine plus four plus two equals 15. And then you run another series, right? On the one and the five from the 15 and you come up with six as your digital root. And you can follow through with these larger examples, noticing how they reduce each time until you're at a single digit and then you stop. So the example, the examples given are very good here. I think that makes it clear. So you know what to do. Go ahead and solve this one. Pause the video. When you come back, I'm going to show two solutions. I'm going to use an iterative solution and I'm going to use one or I, I'm going to show one using recursion. They just because they mentioned the recursive sum here, you don't have to use recursion, but why not? I figured it could be a chance for you to see that in action some more. So let's get into it. All right, so let's use iteration first. We'll do, we'll do that first. So, and that's in a nutshell, recursion is where a function calls itself in, in the simplest sense. And so we won't do that here. We're gonna instead uh, sort of create state variables like we normally do. And then as the program executes, these state variables get updated and you can make decisions based on current values at any time. That's kind of the alternative way of programming besides using recursion. So we can do that. I'm going to make a helper method too uh, we've had this come up in the past a number of times. If you've been with me, you know that this issue of getting the digits from a numerical value has repeatedly come up. So um, that'd be good if you can implement this. Hopefully that's sticking and you're remembering it. So I'm going to make a list of int. We'll call it digits. It's a new list of int, I think this is the same way I've been doing it. And then we can say while n is greater than zero, right? And we're gonna sort of keep peeling digits off as it is. So we can say digits add, list as an add method when you wanna add elements to it. And we can say n modulo 10, right? That gives us the ones place digit. The, the least significant digit. And then of course, we're in a while loop, we know we have to update, otherwise we end up in an infinite loop and we just keep while n is greater than zero. If n never updates, it's always greater than zero, assuming it started there. And so your program times out. But we did update that value. We keep reducing by 10, sort of shifting the least significant digit out you can imagine the, thing, the whole number kind of shifting to the right. So with 132, 189 here, you'd get the nine first, then the eight, then the one. As you grab them, as you divide by 10, you're sort of removing each of those numbers. So let's say return digits. And you may note that my digits um, are being added in a reverse order. So with that number I just said, our returned values are gonna actually be nine, eight, one, two, three, one. But when you consider what we're doing here, right, we're adding the digits together. And you probably remember from your math classes that the order of addition, it doesn't matter, right? You'd get the same result if you rearrange these numbers to say three plus two plus eight plus one plus nine plus one. You can shuffle them in whatever order you want and it doesn't matter for addition, you get the same result. So um, don't be troubled if you notice that this will return the digits in a reverse order. It doesn't matter here. You could reverse them, but it, it wouldn't help you in solving the problem any. Okay, good. So we got this really nice helper method where for any um, long integral value, we can 
get a collection of its digits. That will break the 942 into 942, right? But like I said, ours will be 249 because they're reversed, but who cares? So good. So I'm going to handle just a simple case right now. I'm right at the top, I'm going to say if n is less than 10, right? That means it's already a single digit um, or I suppose negative. I don't think they should be giving us negatives, but we'll find out. Um, if it's less than 10, just return n, right? You're already done. You don't need to bother with any of this grabbing digit stuff. And you'll note that n is of type long. They're expecting an int, so I'll cast it to an int so we don't get yelled at. If you want to see, I'll just leave it, and then we'll fix it when we get yelled at. Okay, good. Simple case is out of the way. So let's set this up to solve. We can use our helper method, right, to get the digits. List of int digits. And you can use var digits if you want, if you're comfortable with that. Get digits. Um, and n. We're starting from n, right? And then I'm going to sort of maintain not only the digits, but I'm, I'm very interested in their sum as well, right? And the sum, we can say, is simply our digits. And we know we have the sum method. We've used that a lot, right? We just got to bring in link. Okay. So we've summed the digits. We know we're done when we're down to one digit. So how can I express that? We want to keep working until we're down to one digit. I will express that by saying if digits.count uh, while it's greater than one, right? Means there's two or more digits and we got to keep working to get down to one. Uh, similarly, I think you could say if the sum was less than 10, um, that I think would work. I'll do it this way. And so while it's not less than one or equal to one, I should say, we're going to keep updating it. We're going to say digits equals get digits, but this time with the sum, right? We're going to get our digits. We're going to sum them. You know, that one plus six happens. And we get the seven, and then we check, you know, or, hey, are you down to one digit? In that case, we are. So you pop out of the while loop. Um, otherwise, though, with these multi step ones, you got to keep going, right? You had 15, you got to go through the while loop, and you're going to get that sum of one plus five is six. So digits um, equals get digits, we have that. Then we can say we update our sum value as right as well, right? Digits sum, same thing we did before, right? So it's just updating the values. It's just like what we did here, but as we loop through, we gotta update them, right? Otherwise you never get anywhere. You don't progress if you don't update these, these values and we're sort of kind of crunching the original value down. You can think of it that way. And then finally, when you're done, let's return digits zero. Like I said before, digits is already composed of integers, so I'll just grab the first one. Um, you could use, you could return the sum here. I would say you could return the sum as well if you wanted. You're just going to have to cast to an integer. And yeah, you, the sum wouldn't necessarily work well in the while loop. I think I said that before, but um, you could use sum here. You just got to make it to an int instead of a long. So something like this should work, provided I didn't make any of my boneheaded mistakes. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, system link, right? I know that's definitely wrong. List, yeah, we use list, so remember where that is. System collections, generic. And even though sometimes it's frustrating typing these out in here in the browser, it's kind of nice that it forces you to, to learn some of those. Okay, so cannot convert from type long to int on line nine. Remember, we talked about that. I said we get yelled at, so let's go ahead and cast that. But you got to see it, right? 
Name digit does not exist in the current context. Okay, on line 17, let's go down there. Um, oh, sure, yeah, there is nothing named digit, right? I called it digits. I apologize if you've been screaming at me this whole time. Uh, cannot convert from long to int on line 29. Let's go to line 29. Yep, same thing. Uh, digits, n is a long, right? And when I do that modulo, it still comes out as a long, so I'll do another cast. I'll group these in parentheses. I want this whole statement in parentheses because I want to cast the result. Okay, test again. What else do you have for me? Okay, they let us through. So good, yeah. Um, we've got an iterative solution where we just sort of maintain state variables. That's like how we normally program, right? And most of the challenges we've done in here, we haven't used recursion. I think I've only used it in a few. So that shouldn't be any anything new, just the general approach, I mean. So let's go ahead and do the same thing though. Let's look at what this could look like if we leveraged recursion. And it's a little more compact and simplified. And I'll probably submit my result that way. I'm gonna keep this get digits method, it's still helpful for us. I'm gonna comment out the other solution. So um, with recursion then just know that we will call the method from the method. So I'm going to invoke digital root from inside the body of digital root, which is a little weird when you first learn it, right? Um, and the important point with recursion is that you have a base case. And in our case, it's this n is less than 10, right? That's when we're done. Usually base cases are just really trivial cases where you can kind of you just immediately return a value. And the idea with the recursion is you can imagine if a function keeps calling itself, it's almost like those while loops that get out of control and they kind of do an infinite loop kind of thing. So you've got to progress toward the base case. That's the thing that has to happen. Otherwise you don't really end. So um, let's do that. Let's work towards that. I'm going to still use, you know what, I'm going to keep the list int of digits oops All right now i have the digits and i'm going to return digital root like i said we're going to call the method names we're going to invoke it from itself and i'm going to say digits sum and so kind of think about that for a minute let's go back to the instructions I got the digits for the current value of n, right? If it was less than 10, we're already done. We're out of here. We got our answer. But assume it's, you know, 942. You're going to get those as individual digits. And then you're calling the same method now on the sum. And the sum of the individual digits, it's probably very clear that it's always less than what the original value is. So we're always moving down towards this n is less than 10 base case. I'm not going to go into a mathematical proof that it's always uh, decreasing, but I'll just say briefly that you can imagine a series of ones place values um, gets trumped pretty quickly by numbers that have weighted values like four tens and nine hundreds, right? The nine represents hundreds in, in the original part. So uh, feel free to work that out if you don't believe me, but it is working towards the base case. And so if I run this, look at that. Nice and compact and pretty neat how that works, right? And of course you could, I, I try to write this out in multiple lines just so I'm not overwhelming people, but you could do it like this too. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, I'll hit the attempt just to make sure. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna sub submit mine this way, uh, nice and compact, used recursion when they were talking about um, the, the recursive way of finding a digital root, so 
I think that's pretty fitting. It's well worth your time to read about recursion. Uh, if you're serious about programming, it's go it's going to come up, and it is very much your friend sometimes too. So that'd be worthwhile investment in my opinion. I'm going to delete my commented out part. I'm sorry too I, about this earlier where I said I think you could use some here, but um, I, I don't think you'd want to do that. I'm thinking of larger numbers with ones and zeros where maybe your sum was low for a large number. So don't stick with this. Okay, I'll remove that. Get digits is nothing new, right? We've done that. Same kind of helper method. And there's the actual solution. I like it. I think I'll stick with that. I'm still using some. Okay. I'll hit the attempt again since I cleaned up. And submit. Okay, we're in. And yeah, you know, look at this. You got all sorts of clever answers to to look through here and and learn from. Otherwise, yeah, hit me up with your questions, comments. You know where to find me. Otherwise, we're going to keep moving on. Thanks for watching.